Well, this is super weird. A new study has demonstrated that amyloids can be responsible for epigenetic changes and can be heritable. We're familiar with amyloid plaques because of bovine spongiform encephalopathy, chronic wasting disease, and fatal familial insomnia, and probably Alzheimer's. Amyloid plaques come from contagious proteins like prions. Those are ones that, when bumping into another protein, can cause it to misfold and they stick together. Most all the proteins in your body have the stuff that interacts with water on the outside and the stuff that doesn't interact with water on the inside. Think oil. What prions do is they turn them inside out. It has been postulated that prions could have been an early enzyme. We have proteins in our bodies called chaperonins. They fold proteins correctly. When proteins can't be folded correctly, they go and get sliced up and degraded and the amino acids get reused. Plaques are kind of harder to manage because they form these big blebs. When a protein tries to come in and say, hey, you're misfolded, you gotta go get sliced up, it doesn't work because they can't access the core. So we might have thought that these things were wholly deleterious. Nope, they found in C. elegans. Yes, nematodes, those weird little worms that we found frozen in the Arctic and revived after thousands of years. They're basically a tube. You are also a tube, but you're a little bit more complex than them. They found that amyloids, these plaques that we have in our bodies, which are contagious, helped them differentiate correctly into their correct sex. Not just that, but they have heritable qualities. They're epigenetic. If you're not familiar with epigenetics, it's everything that happens outside of your actual genetic code. It's the same reason why identical twins can have different traits, because they're being expressed differently thanks to a number of factors that cause that to happen. These very same principles have been used in more advanced genetic therapies where they can turn off and on genes that are causing problems. One of the very same therapies that I've discussed involves turning off the gene for PRP, the one that causes all of the problems in our brains. But there may be a reason that these things exist at all. They could have been an early version of a protein that folds other proteins, i.e. chaperonins. Now this is really important. We're finding all sorts of little things in our bodies that we didn't consider because they're not part of what we considered the main picture to be. There may in fact be amyloids in our bodies that are useful for folding other proteins. Maybe they're no longer useful. We find things like that too. Kinda like how chickens still have the genes for teeth, but if you turn them on, it's not viable because it's also involved in the formation of their bones. Yeah, kind of like that. But finding out this scenario exists at all could unlock a whole new mechanism of epigenetics that we were not even aware of. We know we don't have the complete picture. We know that we don't understand how things like memories, fearful memories, could be passed down, but they can be. It may be that we were just looking at the wrong mechanism. Either way, this is an extraordinary discovery and it should be investigated further. 